Well, why do you have the lights on? Oh, God, Jack. I was like, why is it so bright in here? Gotta keep it moody. That's our vibe. Moody. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about... Board games. And... Board gamey things. Exactly. My name is Jamie. And I'm Jeff. And we're here today to do... The long-anticipated... The long-anticipated overview and review... Holly Sot. Ooh, this bad boy. Sleeping Gods. Red Raven Games. Designed by Ryan, Ryan Lockett. Lockett. Lockett in a pocket. What a beast. This gang is a beast. I want to caveat before we start and apologize to all of the people that still are waiting to get their hands on a copy of this. You'll get it's it. It's not their fault. There's a lot going on in the world. Yeah. I just hope that you get it soon and you get a chance to play it. Do you have the notes? Boy, do I. Let's start. So you get more prepared. I like it. With the overview. Box <laughs> cards. Excuse me. This is the wandering sea. The gods have brought you here and you must wake them if you wish to return home. In Sleeping Gods, you and up to three friends become Captain Sophie Odessa and her crew, lost in a strange world in 1929 on your steamship, the Manticore. You must work together to survive, exploring exotic islands, meeting new characters, and seeking out the totems of the gods so that you can return home. Sleeping Gods is a campaign game. Each session can last as long as you want. When you are ready to take a break, you mark your progress in the journey log sheet, making it easy to return to the same place in the same game the next time you play. You can play alone or with friends throughout your campaign. It's easy to swap players in and out at will. Your goal is to find as many totems as possible which are hidden throughout the world. Like reading a book, you'll complete this journey one or two hours at a time, discovering new lands, stories, and challenges along the way. Sleeping Gods is an atlas game. Each page of the atlas represents only a small portion of the world you can explore. When you reach the edge of a page and you want to continue in the same direction, you simply turn to a new page and sail onward. Sleeping Gods is a storybook game. Each new location holds wild adventure, hidden treasures, and vivid characters. Your choices affect the characters and the plot of the game and may help or hinder your chances of getting home. Welcome to a vast world. Your journey starts now. Is that epic or what? It is epic. Epic. So that's the game, the end. That's our review of Sleeping Gods. That's the story and we're sticking to it. So Sleeping Gods is an exploration sandbox campaign campaign yeah. game. Yeah, definitely. And we don't want to go into too much detail about the game because spoilers. Yeah, we got to be a little bit mindful. We need to be careful. I'll, I'll mention a few things. It's huge. It's so world. huge that even things that I we may allude to in this yeah. video, you might not even see. You may never see. Because there will be times where we are kind of like exploring and we're like, okay, we want to go back to port and we go back to port and we stop in this kind of open ocean space. Yep. And there's a location that we haven't visited and we're like, okay, well, let's just stop quick and check this out. We did that recently mm -hmm. and it was a massive iron door. We couldn't open it. Couldn't open it. I'm and, not strong enough to do that. But we didn't have the tools required to open it. And we don't and know, we don't where, know to where to get them. the tools. That's one example of hundreds of yeah. things that you might come across in this game that A, might not even have anything to do with the main like yeah. quest. It's just stuff you find and yeah. then it, you go down this rabbit hole. Anyway. We'll, we'll get into it. So we've played this game at two players only, and we've probably put in about seven hours? I was going to say around six. So six or seven yeah. hours into this game, and I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. It's I feel crazy. like we've just started, and we're already six hours in. Yeah. But we also are like, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's that? Just like Jack Skellington <laughs> in Nightmare Before Christmas. What's this? What's yeah. this? There's magic everywhere. That is pretty much the best we can do for an overview without yeah. doing spoilers. You are <laughs> exploring a mysterious land, yep. trying to find totems yep. that will send you home. And it's kind of cool because each player, like Jack plays as like three or four different four. characters. I play as four different characters and then we share the captain. Each person will take their turn. There's yep. three steps, three or four steps for the turn. You pick a space on the ship, mm -hmm. you do an event, do two other actions, travel, yep. explore, travel. market, port. Yep. That's the game. Yep. And then it unfolds as it unfolds. 
Sometimes you might get into a fight and have to combat some monsters. Or sometimes you might have to repair your damaged ship or heal your people or, or cook some food or craft. go shopping. Rodney Smith has a how to play on yeah. this game. So I will make sure to link that down below. Highly recommend Definitely you watch that. Definitely watch a how to play. Yeah. So let's jump into the review starting with the theme. Uh, we already mentioned the theme is it's 1929. Yep. You and your crew are lost in this like mysterious. You've crashed and woken crashed. up in this. You have a ship called the Manticore. Yeah. You're just with your crew trying to figure out how to get out of here and how to get back home by finding totems yep. and waking up the sleeping gods. Yep. It's so good. It's kind of like Lost. Yeah. If you've seen okay. Lost. Yeah. Fair analogy. You're not necessarily waking up on like a deserted island or anything, but it's very much like that. Like you've crashed, you've woken up, and you're like, where are... Where am I? And you're starting to uncover. You have an initial conversation and get a broad overview of what's going on in this mm -hmm. world and what this world is about. And then you slowly uncover what this world is actually about by having conversations with people you meet at different locations mm -hmm. and stuff. Theming, dead on for this me. This game is heavily themed. If you don't buy into the theme, if you don't immerse yourself into the theme Story of this driven, game, yeah. you are not going to enjoy it as much unless you actually do. Unless you're like, yeah. this is my crew and we got to talk to these people and we're on a boat. Yeah, if you can't get lost in a game, this is going to be tough. Yeah. If you're playing this purely on mechanics, it will not be enjoyable. No, I think the theme yeah. is really cool. It's an adventure in a box. I'm just trying to navigate because I don't want to... Spoil anything. I but really like, as an example, like, your ship gets damaged. Yeah. And you have to fix it. And that's something that I assume would actually happen if you were going through this yeah. journey through all of these, like, weird islands mm -hmm. and unchartered territory. Like, you're going to hit monsters and bump into rocks and, and storms and, and storms and your ship's going to get damaged and if your ship gets too damaged you can't fix it then yeah. your crew's going to drown so you need to work yeah. together to fix your ship yeah. heal your people like yeah. it's just the only thing that's not included and i'm glad they didn't include it because that would just be over management is like you don't need to worry about fuel so there's a note in the Yet. in the <laughs> uh in the book that states that thematically the manticore has enough fuel for you to do everything you need to do really that's great the theme. do you yeah. have anything else to say no. about it no. besides he loves it yeah Next up is the components. Now, this is where things get tricky because I don't want to show you everything that's in the box because yep. secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets hurt someone, but sometimes you got to keep secrets. Number one, the box itself is beautiful. Like the inside has full artwork. What the heck is this? That's the atlas. Oh, <laughs> like, what is this? Jeff usually sets it up, but it comes with an atlas. Which... It's not really spoilers. Um, maybe show just the intro one. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, don't stop this, looking. So this is the intro map. So basically you'll have two sides to each. And then if you travel, say downward or this way or up, you then will shift to the corresponding page in the book. Yes, and the map is broken up into different locations that you can explore and all that yeah. stuff. It also comes with a log book. So this is where you actually keep track of your journey. You save this game as you play. So you're like, yep. okay, we're playing for two hours, we're stopping. This is where you write down everything. Like where does your ship have damage? What ability cards do you have? Like, where is yeah. your ship's location? What kind of experience yeah. did you get? All of that stuff. And what's really cool is on the back of it, it gives you a full map of everything. That atlas I just showed, it's broken it down for the entirety of mm -hmm. the world. So you yes. can see, it doesn't show everything. It'll give all the numbers. Yep. And some of the main ports and stuff will be listed because you will have conversations with people that will be like, blah, blah, blah is located in this, this town. Place. And what's really great about it is like, they encourage you to take notes on yeah. the back here. So you're going to be asked about keywords. Like if you have this keyword, then you can actually do this thing. So mm -hmm. if you run into that, we write all of the keywords that we encounter here. If we've already done something that we feel like, yeah, we maybe won't go back there anymore. So we'll just cross it off. Yeah. So this is a really great way to kind of keep track of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The next thing that comes in here is the storybook. This is all the spoilers right in here. Yeah. So every time you go to a new location or you do something, it tells you which page to go to, which yeah. number to go to. And then when you read that, that's where it'll say, if keyword this, go here and read this. Or if not, yeah. read this. So everything about this game is in this yeah. storybook. And this thing is a beast. Yep. Like, can you see how thick that yep. is? This is the ship. Mm -hmm. 
right here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but basically it has different locations that you can go on your turn. And this is how you follow your turn action. So yep. like I mentioned, you do a ship action, you do an event, and then you could do any two actions down at the bottom. So this is where you keep all of your resources, yep. your event cards, and how you keep track of your ship damage and all that good stuff. And I didn't mention... How's the paper? Beautiful. Beautiful paper. Summer. It does come with this little quick start guide as well with just magnificent paper. Mm -hmm. Then it gives you little yeah. compartments to put all of your stuff in which is amazing. This one is the, it has all the quest and adventure cards in it. So when you come across new places and it has a number associated, be like pull quest card for 10. It's all in here. Mm -hmm. So one of the boxes is for all of the components that are on the ship that you've been playing with. Another one is for like resources. Mm -hmm. Another one is for whatever. Each player, like I said, in a two player game, we each play with four different characters. So this is an example of what one of those characters looks like. This is Mac. She's one of my people. Mm -hmm. So on the character board, it's going to show you what their different skill strengths are. Yep. It's going to show you what their fighting and accuracy is, whether or not they have a shield or life total total and then some special abilities that they have if you pay for them. Yep. All of these characters can also be equipped with different cards, mm -hmm. which once again, I'm not going to show you. There's a bunch of little cards that give them added skills and added abilities. Yep. On the back of the character cards, and what I really wanted to highlight for the component piece is that every character has their backstory. Mm -hmm. So you can really kind of get into the story if you're yep. like, okay, this is Mac Mara Johnson and here's her story and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. so you can connect with your people yeah. a little bit more. Oh, thanks. Come here. Nobody wants to see your butt. Then you also get some wooden components. There's little blood drops for when you're, you get damaged, little red cubes for your ship damage, blue cubes, which are action tokens, but they have a different name. Yeah. And then there's gray cubes and those are for combat. So during combat, each person gets two and then you have to put it on your character when you're fighting mm. to show that they're the ones that are fighting. You also get a bunch of cardboard tokens as well. Like I said before, there's money, resources, other things that you don't need to yeah, know about. like Other things that are secrets. Exhaustion tokens, conditions. Conditions, like you can become mad, madness, madness there's poison, poison or yeah. venom or whatever. All of that stuff is in here. Lots of little cardboard tokens. And then there's also cards, which like I said, I'm not going to go into, but there are event cards, which you pull mm -hmm. every round. There's also combat cards of creatures that you have to fight. Creatures, yep. And there are those little, I forget what they're called. Uh, is it fate? These ones. What are you called? I think they're fate. Maybe fate. Who's to say? You have to pull cards almost constantly. Pretty much, yeah, anything you do. You're going to flip, I do believe it's called fate, a fate card. It will dictate how successful you are versus maybe not quite as successful. Those are the components, or yeah. as much as I'd like to show you. So overall, just the quality is amazing. Yeah, There's, it's... I have no complaints about the quality. The artwork is beautiful. Yeah. The production value is stunning. Yeah. And the actual, oh, I forgot to mention, it comes with a little ship. Yeah, little the Manticore has a the little... Boat was a would be the only bigger. figure in the game. I think it would look really cool painted. Yeah, there's no... But you just kind of move it around There's the no minifigs or anything. No. It's just the Manticore. Yeah. Okay, so moving into the rules. This game is a bit of a beast. There's a lot. That's it's a sure. lot, but it's also not like heavy yeah once you know once you know how it works you're yeah. rolling yeah because really like like we mentioned you just go through your four steps yeah. it's more so the rules get a bit more finicky when there's combat the combat's a bit finicky yeah um there's there's just some splash damage rules specific ways that damage hits with accuracy and range yeah. the rule yeah. book is really good at um explaining everything and again the watch it played video with rodney is a must in my opinion yeah. and it might take you a play yes. and a bit to get it and so if you've played if you play it once and you're like fumbling through don't worry that's about it. fine like honestly don't worry about it it's such a huge game i i wouldn't be concerned with the game you get your rule book command tokens what those blue things the are blue things are called command, command tokens. tokens we still don't know what the cards are called they're probably in here oh they're probably fate yeah it's fate you get a condensed 
version of the rule book that you can keep on the table. This is the quick start guide. So when you do your first scenario, you're gonna go through this quick start guide. It's, it's walking you through helpful. everything. It's taking, telling you where to go, what to do, how to fight, all yeah. of that stuff. So just have this out when you play your first one. I would still recommend watching the Rodney video. 100%. We, I watched it, Jeff watched it. Just for and setup and Jeff stuff. also read yeah. the quick start guide. Yep. The yep. rule book has iconography references on the back. Yeah, we're like Jamie said, mentioned, we're six to seven hours in and we still check stuff constantly. For and sure. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, like it's your experience. Like you don't need to worry yes. about stuff like that. And I don't know opinion. if this is now when you want to talk about house rules. I will mention it briefly. So one thing with this game, and this is going to maybe come back up in the critique, is the exhaustion limits of this game can get very difficult to manage. So anytime you have to make a decision, normally how the game works is you would choose a character to help in an event. Yeah. Let's say, for example, you wanted to fight something and you're like, okay, I'm going to use Mac. I'm going to exhaust Mac to add to my successes. Then you would flip a fate to yeah. see if you're successful. And if you're not. And if you're not, you don't flip the, you're still exhausted. That can be very punishing. In full transparency, when we're playing a game like this, we just want to have fun yeah. and explore the game. I had done some reading on BGG yeah. and one of the recommended issues is actually to flip the fate first and then choose if you want to exhaust because the exhaustion can be a, a difficult thing to get over like yeah. once you're all of your characters are exhausted you it's very difficult combat point like yeah. you're not as strong it's very you punishing can't help out in further skill yeah. checks so so yeah. uh, instead of getting in too much into house rules one thing i'll mention is that maybe look at possibly flipping the fate first and then choosing to exhaust characters yeah. if you need to as opposed to the game recommended opposite way around i believe ryan lockett has released some notes to make like the game easier for people that want to yeah. play it that way so you can go check that out find it on Line. Do what you need to do to make sure this game is fun for you. I just want to mention it in yeah. case you're like us and want a little bit of an easier experience. However you want to play it, it's your game. It's your game, Do guys. what you want. Don't let people make you feel bad if you don't yeah. follow every single yeah. game. So next up is gameplay and replayability. Gameplay is fun, but not but. Fun, but <laughs> you have to be able to make decisions. So mm -hmm. if you are playing this game and you expect somebody else to make all the decisions, it might be a little bit frustrating for that other person. I think that we both do that. So I think that so long as you're playing with somebody who you guys can work together collaboratively, I think that's great. If you have a quarterbacker in your group, yeah, this, maybe less this, fun. I'd be concerned about quarterbackers in this game. And I, yeah. we, we don't do that. No, it's never, we're the opposite. It's never, yeah, it's never an issue in our in our plays, yeah. be mindful of that. So yeah. we actually recently talked about this and we actually came up with the mindset of like, if it's your turn you and it's your character, you are making the decision. And if you want to have a dialogue, we can have the dialogue, but ultimately the end decision is up to you. Yeah. And I think that's the best way to do it. I also think gameplay, I really like that you can, we are literally like, okay, we're going to set an hour time limit. Mm -hmm. When the bell goes off, we'll pack it all up. Like that's the beauty of it. You can literally save the game. You could just pick up where left off gameplay is very <laughs> smooth once you're in yeah just based on the merits of the gameplay like what you're doing so rule structure or mm -hmm. turn order is very simple it basically tells you move a meeple on the ship take the action draw an event card do two more actions it's Shock. very straightforward yeah very straightforward the gameplay is very straightforward but i said straightforward like four times there it wait straightforward is straightforward it? okay it's straightforward i wasn't sure it's there is a, a lot. lot going on in this game there's a lot and mind you we are playing this at two players yeah and this is going to also come up in the critique but in a two-player game you're managing a lot of things mm -hmm. a, a lot, lot of people, of people with asymmetric abilities. Yep. You have four people, a ship captain, a ship. A bunch of quests. Quest cards. Market that you market have to remember stuff, that you can use. Resources you have. Skill card abilities that skill trigger. Skill abilities, <laughs> conditions, yeah. exhaustion. There's a lot going on in this game. Yeah. Be mindful of that. So gameplay can become very overwhelming very quickly. Like there yep. was a point in one of our games where we were playing and we're like, like, this is a lot. Let's just pack it up. Which is why I think house rules 
are really handy mm -hmm. for this kind of game. This is an exploration game mm -hmm. that is not overly punishing in gameplay yeah. versus a game like Seventh Continent yeah. where you're like, oh, I did this thing and I'm dead. Now we have to do it all over again. Yeah. There are lots of different ways that you can enhance the gameplay and continue it by, you know, taking healing your people. There's a few different ways yeah. you can heal your people and there's different ways you could take exhaustion away and, and to keep playing. But yeah. I find that the gameplay is not as punishing, which to me makes it more fun. Yeah, it's, it's a fail forward kind of system. And the other thing I would say, if you're not going to go a house rule, one thing to take into consideration when you're playing this game, exhaustion is much worse than taking like a point of damage. Yeah. And that was something we were not doing correctly. We were constantly exhausting characters in order, to, want to, fail. In order to succeed in challenges. Yeah. And I would argue that like fail, fail the thing, take the one hit of damage and move forward because it's much easier to take and heal a health than it is sometimes to unexhaust all of your characters. Yep. And replayability is a hundred percent there. I know it's it seems weird because you're like you're playing the same story. But all you have to do is make one different decision to set your journey off in a totally different mm -hmm. way. You could go to, there's so much to explore that I don't think we're going to be able to, you're, we're not going to be able to get to everything no. <laughs> by God, the no. end of us finding these totems. So I think this would be a game that I would probably play through. And then in a year, maybe we'd be like, hey, like, let's. Play, want to do I, this again because it, yeah. it'll be a totally different experience. I want to play it through with two. Yeah. And then wait a while and then play it through with three. Yeah. 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 And yeah. see what that's like. Because to Jamie's point, yeah, like we did a thing at the very beginning. Like there are we certain made a decision and that set off. There our are journey. certain steps that are probably gonna be like somewhat similar at the very beginning. Yeah. But like you could go to a place and be like, I'm we off decided on a to go west. We could have yeah. gone east. The end goal is going to be the same, <laughs> collecting the totems. The totems but Anyways. I mean, the book is like two, three hundred pages. Yeah. Yeah. Replayability high. The only thing I would say is there's a hurdle getting it to the tables because it's a lot. It's a big boy. We'll move into critique yeah. now, which I think that is one of our biggest critiques is this game is a friggin beast. It takes up the entire table. Yeah. It takes a long time to set up a long time to put away and then you have to mark in your log if you have a table that you could just put like a lid on like cover so, it up <laughs> yeah yeah perfect we have animals yeah. and we don't have a table that you lets us noticed. cover it <laughs> so we can't leave games out no but this would be a prime candidate yeah for having a game left on the table yeah and just left Yes. And then whenever you want to pick at it, like if you had a game table that you could put an insert over top of and just leave this sitting in it It'd set up. Perfect. Perfect. The biggest because hurdle for it us. It is a lot to get to the table. It takes setting. a long time. You're yeah. putting it away slightly different every time because we're like, well, let's keep this stuff together so we remember. And if you don't play it this week, next week, next week, it's like, oh crap, why did I put this in here? And did I write all of this stuff down? And it's like, it really is, I think, a big hurdle mm -hmm. to open it up and set it all up and then play for an hour if that's all we want to play for. And then we're like, oh gosh, now we have to take it all back down. And yeah, yeah it's yeah, a Yeah, set lot. up and take down is a lot. And that's similar for like a Gloomhaven, it's similar to that. So yeah. if you're comfortable with setting up Gloomhaven, playing it and taking it down, this will be the same that's for you. Fine. If that's an issue for you, this will be an issue for you. You need to have a big table though. One of my first critiques of this game is it's too it's too much in my opinion a two players count. To have four people in front of you yeah. to manage is too much. Yes, it's a lot. I would rather play this game I think at a three or four player count. Mm -hmm. Just because then you're playing with, I think, three, three, and three, or is it two, two, and two at three player? Two, two, and two at a four player. And at a three player, it's three, three, and two. Right. Yeah. So one only has two. I think this would be ideal at four. Two, yeah. two, and two. Yeah. Two, 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 and two. Two, 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 two. Okay. Two player. It's a lot. Four is a lot. And it's very difficult because then you also have the ship captain. I always forget about her. It's manageable and it hasn't tainted my experience really. No, but there are like with just to add on to what you're saying with the four characters and you equip them with different things. I miss those triggers 90% of the time. Yeah, it's a lot to go so through. There's so much going on. To look at all the cards you have. Yeah. The asymmetrical player abilities that yeah. each of them have. And then you choose what abilities you're equipping them with. And like I have one that allows me to remove fatigue tokens. And at the end of the last game I looked down I was like oh I could have helped us because I just didn't that will get better as we play more yeah and we get familiar with our characters yeah my biggest gripe with this game is that it doesn't come with an app component 
This game would be enhanced, in my opinion, tenfold by having an app of like something that read the story to you and yeah. you could kind of click and it would unfold things and it would keep track of fatigues and all this stuff because that's another part of the player management. It's like, okay, well, I've got these two fatigue things and, oh, I've got this thing and, you know, they kind of blend in with the character board. So if I had an app that was like, okay, Mac is exhausted, which means this and this and then something, yeah, mm -hmm. I think an app would just, it would totally change this game and, and I know a lot of people don't love app based yeah. games because it takes away from it but I think this game could afford to take a little bit away from yeah. it <laughs> I think if you fall in the camp I'm going to use Gloomhaven again sure. as the example if you fall in the camp of liking to use Gloomhaven helper yeah to play which Gloomhaven we which we do you will feel the same as Jamie for this game yeah you will wish there was some sort of like app like Gloomhaven helper just to help a little bit of the lifting yeah. Not to play the game for you, no, just but to just to help of manage some, some of the things. Yeah. If you fall in the camp of Gloomhaven where you're a purist and you're like, nope, no way am I playing Gloomhaven. That's not the right way to play with an app. You will not agree with Jamie because it's the exact same situation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. But I think it's worth mentioning that to Jamie's point, I 100% agree. This game would be much, 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 much better mm -hmm. if it had just an app that allowed a little bit of the lifting. Yeah. Because again, a two player, there's a lot to manage. I would just, I love when apps like Destiny's has an amazing app. I'm like sure if it read know. the story to it you, it reads would be cool. the story with like the cool narrator and the yeah. background music. And it not makes quite it, as cool when it's me. It, well, it is still, <laughs> it's still very cool. You're very cool. But uh, I think like it's just, it helps with the immersion of everything. Like, I don't know. I love how Destiny's has the background music and it's like, yeah. and even when nothing's playing, the music is still playing and you're kind of like, oh, I'm in this like medieval yeah. fantasy world. Yeah, it just world. adds and to the immersion. I would love yeah. to hear like, you know, like the birds and like mm -hmm. the waves and all of that stuff. I don't know if like some games have... A, like a soundtrack i don't know if this one has yeah. one but i would love if it did my i guess kind of final critique is something i've already mentioned and i know that some people already are watching this video are already thinking this like if a game if you're already saying a game needs to be changed yeah with host rules then it's not a good game fair enough if you believe that i disagree yeah one of the critiques i do have is that there are little tweaks to this game that I wish they included in it. Like they did have beginner and never, Advanced, yeah. and Ryan did put out a beginner mode and that's great. Yep. That is a critique I have. I just feel like when you get into this, like kind of like introducing host rule stuff, but we do that for all, we do that for a, a lot, lot of, games. of games. You can play this as it's meant to be played and it would still be amazing. And some people like the stress of games. Yeah. You know, and I don't. I have enough stress in my life with work and stuff. I don't need that right. to be invoked in a in a board game. So geez. there's no reference cards, but with this mm. game I don't know that you really need them because mm -hmm. the ship itself does tell you what to do and there is an iconography chart right here. Yep. But if you do need to figure something out, go through the rule book, it's also not that bad. So don't yeah. worry about that. But yeah. there are no reference cards if that is a common complaint that you have. Moving into final thoughts. Go ahead. I really like this game. I struggle with making decisions mm -hmm. in general because I, it's kind of the same thing with me and Destinies where I'm like, I don't know what the right decision is. And sometimes I need there to, isn't one. Yes, I need to get over the fact that sometimes there is no right decision. And I'm always worried that I'm going to make the wrong decision and then we're going to end up doing something that causes us to die, which I never say no to a fight and sometimes I should. <laughs> So, but I think that's yeah. cool. Like that's your play style and I think that's fine yeah. and you need to be okay with that. Yeah. I typically lean towards games that I know what I'm doing. I have a lot of direction, mm. but it doesn't mean that I don't like it. I still yeah. do really like it. I do wish it had an app. One thing that I really like about this game is the diversity of the characters. There's a lot of men, women from all over the world. They all have a backstory. There's somebody from Quebec yep. in Canada. There is a Canadian character uh, in this Laurent. game. Laurent. So I uh, love Saint that. Saint Laurent. No. His last name is Saint Laurent, isn't it? I think his first name is Laurent. I can't remember. I don't remember. He's one of my people. I should yeah. know. <laughs> I like that the characters are all so different with what they're good at and their skills. So like obviously Laurent, he's a sailor, so he's very sea savvy and that's one of his skills. Mm -hmm. And one of my team members is also a doctor. And so he's able to heal people. And like, mm -hmm. I think it's very, I like the theme and how thematic it is. Where Laurent, La Pointe. La Pointe. La Pointe. La Pointe. And Jeff's got a guy that looks like Freddie Mercury. 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and is he's it really Mac? strong. No, Raphael. No, Raphael. Yeah. And like they're all from all over the world. They're very diverse characters. I I just think that that was done really, really well. My final thoughts. Yeah. You hate it? So I absolutely adore this game. I've cooled on it a little bit since yeah. my initial it was like real high when we started. My <laughs> initial like crazy high hype, like favorite game of all time. However, I think Actually, I should say, I think I know that that is only because we've played it at two-player. If we had played this at four-player and I was only managing two characters, mm -hmm. this would probably be my favorite game of all time. That is and the, if it had an app. That is the, the app thing doesn't bug me quite as much as how much management I'm doing on four characters. Yeah, that's fair. That being said, given that I can only base it off the experience of playing it at two-player, it's still like, I think, a top 10 game for me. Maybe top five. I'm not sure yet. I want to get through a full campaign before I make that call. Mm -hmm. But th this again is the type of game that's made for someone like me. Like yep. I love the story. I love the exploration. I do wish there was an app. It doesn't bug me quite as much. Even if there was an app, just to Jamie's point to read, like if you could just pick the story option mm -hmm. and have them read it to you yeah. with the music and stuff. That'd be good too. If there is a, can somebody, well, I can Google it. I shouldn't be so lazy, but if you already know if there yeah. is a soundtrack, available for this game I'd anywho love to know. i absolutely love this freaking game there's so much to do there's so much to explore the yeah. theme and art is epic phenomenal it's like like honestly one stunning. of the best i've ever seen like yeah. like the color scheme of this just screams me it's like, like I, like. I love the green and blue highly Who's highly your favorite character i love Raphael. my favorite is uh kasumi yeah. She's got a samurai sword and she's yeah. badass. But to Jamie's point, love the fact of the diversity of the characters in this. Yeah, I've, and the captain's a woman, so thank you for doing that because yeah, typically they like, would never do that. And I love that. Awesome. <laughs> the the little ship, the manticore, reminds me of the ship from... Um, Titanic. Just kidding. Indiana, Jones. Oh, Indiana Jones. The little like steamboat thing. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Do I? I love it. I love it. And I hope everyone can get a copy soon because I think... This will be a big hit with a yeah. lot of people. And we have expansions coming for I this do, too. yes, we do have, we have ordered the expansion. I have no clue when we will get that. Those are our thoughts on Sleeping, Sleeping gods. gods. If you had to give it a rating, where are you sitting Out right now? Out of 10? Yep. 8.5. I was gonna say eight. Be a nine with an app. It would be a nine if I had played it at four players. I think. Nine, 9.5 if I played at full four player count. And we'll keep you guys updated because obviously we're probably going to continue playing this every month. So you'll see this pop up in our wrap ups. Oh, he's thought of another critique. I have. <laughs> I knew it. One more quick critique that I have is that they say that you can save and bring people in and play. I would disagree. I disagree. And I'll tell you why. We tried it. We tried it and it is incredibly difficult the save part and bringing someone in, easy. Yeah. Bringing them up to speed on what you've done, where you've gone, and what where you doing. need to go and what you're doing, incredibly difficult. Yeah. The initial bringing in a new person will be difficult. Yes. Incredibly difficult. Yes. Difficult. Perfect. The more you bring that same person back, obviously the easier they'll get. Yeah. It'll get because they'll be familiar with the world, familiar with what you're doing and that sort of thing. But we brought Jason in. You might have seen it in our... Yeah. Last board, uh, last board game weekend video. Yeah. It what well, it just did not work. No. Because he had no idea where we were. He we had were no idea. Trying to explain it's, every little thing. Yeah. I don't think it's quite as easy as the game. No. It's um, like bring indicates. people in, do this, then they can leave. And I'm like, man, to catch that we have probably like six different quest cards out yeah. right now, and to have to be like, well, we found this here, and this is a keyword for this, and so that's why we're keeping it here, and we're, we're looking for this person, and we need. You'd to almost find spend this an thing. hour setting them up and to it's understand just everything. for the for both parties for us explaining it and for the person sitting there having to listen to it that is way too overwhelming yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> one of my biggest critiques yeah. I think. but if you're planning on bringing someone in to continue on the campaign then i think that's totally worth it but with us and jason he was only going to be playing this one and yeah. then he wasn't going to be continuing on with yeah it, it doesn't play well for the sit down play one leave never come back i don't yeah i would argue leave it's, them on the island it's not quite as good as it may yeah. say is at that so that is sleeping gods i would say if you want to buy this game go yeah. to your friendly local gaming store but if you want to buy this game go to your friendly local gaming store ask them to maybe put it on order yeah put it on you, back order or, or ask them or if you have already 
Yeah, yeah. I really, other than that, I don't know. Yeah. You, you will get it eventually. Yeah, it's and again, I would, and... I would like to stress because this has popped up a couple times. It is not Red Raven Games' fault. It is not Ryan Lockett's fault. No, it's not the game itself's fault. It's COVID. Blame There's everything on COVID. There's shipping people. issues <laughs> everywhere, and not just in board gaming. Yeah, like yeah. be patient with your local gaming store. Be patient with the publishers. Be patient with everyone in this industry right now because everybody's we're just trying to we're make on the, it work. The we're on the back can. end of a pandemic. Like yeah. let's let's all just take a collective breath. To chill, chill. Um, and that's easy for me to say because I have this. We have it. I have this on my table. <laughs> We hope you get it soon. It is an amazing game and I can't wait for you to play it. And if you have played it or are going to play it soon, let me know. And don't spoil anything for me. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> check out your friendly local gaming store, regardless of whether or not you want to buy this game or maybe yeah. another game or maybe you have a boardroom game cafe. A game cafe. to hold you over until it comes. Exactly. Yeah. So our local gaming store is the Boardroom Game Cafe. You've heard us talk about it before. On Barrington Street. On Barrington Street. We'll put yeah. all of the information right here and then also down below. If you're in Halifax, please do go and check it out. If you like what you see here, please consider subscribing to Foster the Meeple by clicking the little subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Up. and definitely if you're interested join our discord we yeah, have a please. discord it's grown up to almost a hundred people already yeah, which joint discord my with mind. the table knots guys joint with table knots the chat is amazing it's been probably my favorite part of doing youtube so far is meeting yeah. everybody in discord so please come over and chat with us we're in it all the time because yeah. that this is just what we if do. we stop doing this tomorrow i be completely be content the, yeah. just based Being off in of the discord that little community it's, we've built and amazing. thank you everyone that's in there currently yeah and all those that will join there's so many awesome conversations going on yep i'm starting to struggle to keep up and you can find out all of the movies yeah. that max hasn't watched yeah all the <laughs> movies all and tv them. shows that max from table knots has not seen because he's all never them. seen anything apparently it's i don't crazy. know if he's lived under a rock maybe i don't know who knows? We also recently opened up a Patreon. It is not necessary, but if you're interested in supporting us, we'll leave all that yes. information down below as well. More importantly, definitely just join the Discord. If nothing yep. else, that is completely free. And we also have social media, so feel free to go check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Foster the Meeple. But other than that, that is all we have for you today. We thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Later days. Okay. Later days. I couldn't not say it. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. There we are. Excuse me. Maybe we'll slide it in. Can they see it? Yeah. Yeah, they can see it. Don't look. Spoilers. I would read it if I could. Yeah, I like to read. Brought you here and you must make them if. Wait. I've already messed it up. You might not do that. And it. I'll go get them. That cat is a real piece of work. He's so ridiculous. Bat home. Bat home. Bat home. <laughs> fail, fail system. I killed you. And now you are <laughs> um, dead. I wonder if it's like written anywhere. Probably not. Can't find it. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs>